All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, which Yahweh is named Heavenly Father, and it means He is. All right, and He is, you know, He is everything. His spirit is in every single person, thing, is everywhere. His, his incorruptible spirit is in all things. The table you're looking at. The, the steering wheel you, you grabbing, that cup you holding, that dog you just patted, that bird you seen fly by. The Lord's Spirit is in all of those things. All right? Yes. Um, that's his name. He is. Baha Sham is in the name. Ba and Ha the Sham name. Yahweh Shah is the name of the begotten son. Which means he delivers Matthew one twenty one, you know the the prefix Yah is he, how a shy is delivered. All right, and that's what his name means. That's what he's doing for he shall save his people. And Racha, Quadash means Holy Spirit. Literally translated Spirit Holy, Racha Spirit, Quadash Holy. And double honor to the apostle of Great Millstone. So I think you're doing this thing in sincerity, in truth, and with charity. So, um, you know, back at it. Going through this book of Hebrews, through the spirit. You know. Oh, and, and yes, there is a video missing, which is the first chapter. I did it. And it actually was, I mean, through the spirit, I felt it was, it was great. But, um... The foul did not save. And it wasn't on my spirit to redo it. Just be like that. It's like John heard the thunderings. And the Lord told him, don't reveal it. So I just, it was one of those ones. Sometimes you redo the video. Sometimes the spirit on you not to redo it. All I hope and pray is that your rod direct you by moth. Your how would direct my steps in truth. Yeah. And really, uh, your rod direct now by moth. Your how would direct our steps in truth. That's really how I usually say it, you know. Got to pray for the body, brothers. Um, but let's get to it. Hebrews 9 and 1. Which, um, there's a couple of points I want to touch on. Because I don't always read through the whole chapter. I just, whatever points the Spirit put on me. I go through, may read through this whole one though. But the main points I want to touch on is that. Is the dualism. The, yeah, the dualism or the manifold nature of scriptures and prophecy and the uh, the, the, the importance of Yahweh Shai sacrifice. I just want to touch on that sacrifice, man. Because that's how we make, that's how we're saved through that, the blood of Yahweh Shai. That's how we're cleansed. All right. In fact, we'll start with that. <coughs> that's how we're cleansed, man. Let me, let me find this one. I want this in Peter's. I believe it's Peter. Yep. This is First Peter 1. Man. And 15. But as he which hath called you was holy... First Peter 1 and 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the, to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. All right? So our Lord has died and was raised again for our sake for our calling so we must walk as he as he would as he would please man which does walk in holy just as abraham when the covenant was made and set up now abraham did not receive the he did not receive it it was established it was ready it was set but he did not receive it but he had to do certain. He had to walk a certain way, even still. All right, same now. 
The, the new covenant is ready, it's set, it's established. We have not received the fullness of it. And I'm saying that because there's a verse in the Hebrews that's a stumbling block to some. All right. The covenant that <laughs> the covenant that's been fulfilled is the covenant that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was really it wasn't fulfilled during the time when we got our land of Israel. It was only partially fulfilled because of the flesh, because we still as it was told to Moses, they're going to sin. They're going to be put out the land. For the covenant to be fulfilled, it would, it's the everlasting covenant. Now we're about to actually get it. That's why the book of Hebrews says that the rest that they got with Joshua, that wasn't the real rest. Otherwise, David wouldn't say that there's a... Let me get it. Remain the rest. Oh, no. They just how you just put that like what? It's Hebrews four. And six. Seeing therefore remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Again he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today after so long a time. As it is said, to them you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then would ye not afterward have spoken of another day. So if that rest really came with Joshua, then we uh it wouldn't be another day mentioned. The four and eight uh Joshua twenty-two and four. Let's grab it. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brother as he promised them. Therefore now return ye and get ye unto your tents and unto the land of your possession, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side of Jordan. So they had a, a, a sense of a temporary rest. We was in our land. This is going to be a temporary thing. The rest that was promised, the, the covenants that was promised is an eternal thing. This also goes into actually into the topic of the dualism of the scriptures. Prophecies being fulfilled more than once, but ultimately it's set for that one big event. The Lord can say a prophecy to happen this time, this next generation, but it's really set for this end time. Okay. Or this was is for this specific big thing. Yeah, it happened in the past. It was talking about that. But it really was meant for something bigger in the future. Same thing with this rest. And then it said Deuteronomy. Damn. I should have observed it more. I remember. Hebrews 4 8. Deuteronomy 31 and 7. Okay, it doesn't really mention rest. But let you know that it's talking about us getting the land. Deuteronomy 31 and 7, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage. For thou must go with it, with this people unto the land which the Lord have sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. So, the land is our rest. But that wasn't the real rest. That was a temporary thing. But the promise is eternal. The rest is to be eternal. Hebrews 4. Hey, another example of it is Psalms 110. King David was slaying these different heathens. So King Solomon can have rest when it was his time to rule as King Solomon. But Psalms 110 is a future, a future prophecy. Beyond when King Solomon was ruling, because it's talking about that priest forever with all the Melchizedek. It was going into him establishing his heavenly priesthood 
And that's when his enemy is going to be truly at, at rest. Uh, um, uh, truly laid down so that he can be have a kingdom that's at rest. Even that shows the dualism right there. Yes, King Solomon had rest in his kingdom. But that wasn't the, the fullness of that prophecy. Now it was really finna come. Dualism. Hebrews for or manifold. Let me say manifold because dualism is really, you know, like evil versus good, light versus dark. So let me say manifold. Meaning there's many layers. It's fulfilled more than once. It's talking about more than one time period or more than one thing. Hebrews 4 and 9. There remained therefore a rest of the people of God. So there is a rest left for us. Otherwise it wouldn't have been mentioned. <laughs> he would not have spoken of another day. I will. Uh, Psalm 95, 7 and 8. This shows the quote. Psalm 95 and 7. For he is our power and we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hand today if you will hear his voice. Harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in, in the wilderness. Alright. So that, there you go. J just as they was in the wilderness waiting to get a land and you had some scoffers. He said the same thing. Don't scoff now. Continue on that wait. So we're waiting on that rest, all right? This is not our rest. This will destroy you. It's, sure, it's polluted. So, calm. Let me go back to the Hebrews, make sure there's nothing else I need out of there before I go back to Peter. Oh. There's more in the Psalms 95. Uh, okay, that. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to just keep going. <clears throat> Verse 9. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart. And they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Which of course they died. They didn't see they didn't see the land. But if the rest was when Joshua said, if that was the fullness of the rest, then why would King David be talking about it again? Because <laughs> that wasn't it. It, it was temp it was a temporary uh uh foreshadow, but that wasn't it. That rest is coming. So let's go back to this Peter. Then we can get the Well we'll see what we're gonna get. Spirit knows. Shit. Let me not even <laughs> be like that. This first Peter one and sixteen, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call him the Father who without respect of persons, judged according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. So we gotta we gotta move with fear. Alright, and that fear driveth the way sins. That fear is gonna keep us focused on the journey, on our path, you know, which is is to please the Lord, man, to stand on the one path that Howard shy. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Mashiach, we know we avoid the C word, that's an idol. The Hebrew word Mashiach, all right, it means anointed, is where the word Messiah comes from. All three are acceptable here. Mashiach, anointed, Messiah. This word is not, that's an idol. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 
So our Lord is that sacrifice that cleansed us, man. Who verily was for a day before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you. All right. And that was really the point on it. You know, this is all good, though. But that's really the point on it. We're, we're cleansed. We're cleansed by that blood. And that's per the law. It can't happen with it can't happen any other way. All right. This is oh no. Leviticus seventeen eleven. For the life of the flesh and the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. And this this isn't written. For actual animals. Now, of course, the Lord uh, 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 set it up and, and allowed animal sacrifice as a representation. But this wasn't talking about the age. He, Hebrews 10 and 7, Psalm 40 and 7. The book is written of our Lord Yahweh Shai. What, what purpose does the Lord get out of, out of an animal being sacrificed? What benefit, what benefit is that to him? He don't, he don't eat. Now, of course, it, it is one way. It's a sign of you sacrificing something, you giving up something that belongs to you. But the Lord owns every fucking thing, man. You're not giving, you giving him his own stuff. The real sacrifice is your Howard Shai laying his life down. And this is a song. Let's see. Yep, damn right chapter. Call a long time about some y'all shot. This song fifty. Hey, I would not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I would take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goes out of thy foes. For every beast of the forest is mine, <laughs> and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Everything is the Lord's. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? You think the, that blood offering is something the Lord just sit up there and drinks? No, there's a deeper meaning to it. All friends of the Most High thanksgiving, and pay thy vows to the Most High. All right, and ultimately, uh, you know, Losiah, now we make ourselves that living sacrifice. That's what it boils down to. We gotta we gotta honor our part of the covenant to walk holy. All right. Having that um the uh the heavenly conduct. Cause as we're looking forward to we're rehearsing the righteous acts. Cause we we want to be counted as citizens of the new covenant. We do it now so we can, hey, just as Abraham had to practice then, and it was and it was upon his seed, we're doing that same practice until it's fully placed upon us, man. All right. And call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. So the sacrifice had bigger meaning. It's Hebrews 9 and 1. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread 
which is called the sanctuary. And we have the example of what the, the candlestick represents in Revelation. All right. The church, the light. Who is that light? The men that speak in his word. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer. Damn, which that censer, man. There's a lot of deepness in here. The prayer of the saints goes up like the incense. And it reaches who? A Yahweh Shad, which is in the holiest of holies. He's oh my god, he's the high priest. And the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold. Wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. You can go into details on that. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So the first step, he had to make sacrifice for himself because he himself was in the flesh. And he had to do this yearly because he was not made perfect by these sacrifices. Here we have a sacrifice that will make us perfect. Here we have a sacrifice that will that is bringing us into the new covenant. Which is us not being able to sin anymore and getting our land back forever. The Holy Ghost did signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Which was the figure for the time then present, and which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. We still have fucked up thoughts to this day, which still only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Mashiach being come and high priest of good things to come. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, a priest after the order of Melchizedek, a priest without father and without mother, one as the son of God, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For of the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Mashiach, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to the Most High, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power? Now we do have the ability now through the Holy Spirit to walk in the spirit, which is a down payment. You know, but soon the fullness is going to come. But we will only be able to do what's right. No mistakes. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So have not received it yet, but we will. And might don't mean mate. Let's get it. You know, it means shall. You know, it's just. Because, you know, sometimes the blue letter put the, the compound words together as one. And then it translates a certain way. But we'll get it this way. Might. Verb. Of old English might. Meet they. Originally the past tense of may. To be able. Thus made. The now might have been something that might have happened but did not. Also, someone that might have been greater, but it wasn't. It's by 1848. Now, we know this is King James. So, the way it's written 
the way you think of mites right now, like maybe or it could happen, that didn't exist at this point in time we're reading these scriptures. So we know it means it, it may or to be able. So Hebrews 9 and 15, they which are called may be able to receive the, the promise of eternal inheritance. Or, or they which are called are able to receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So Yahweh Shai's sacrifice made it so now we are allowed to do this. It ain't happened yet. We ain't got the fullness. Now we do have the down payment. It's ready. The blood has been spilled. Just as Abraham, the covenant was made with him. It was set. He had to stay on his path. But he had to wait to get it. That's where we're at with it. We have to wait to get it. And you read, and that's that's the Hebrew. Damn. Hebrews 10 goes into that. After you've done the will of the Lord, now we got to wait. Then Hebrews 11 goes into that wait. Which will be the next two, Lord willing, that'll be the next two we touch on. So this book of Hebrews is deep, man. When you're really going through it, through it. I man, I was talking to the brother lawyer about it, man. It's it's really comfort like this, all the scriptures comforting. It's all we, it's different things that comfort for us. This Hebrews is really meant to be like a comfort. Paul was really going through it and putting a lot in these in this short letter, man. It's hard, man. We are credited to Paul, you know. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken, every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet, slaki, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying, this is the blood of the testament which the Mosai hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. So the people, the, 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 the tabernacle, the, the the candlestick, everything had to get sprinkled with that blood. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. But how does blood clean something? This is something spiritual here. Clearly, this relates on the spiritual level. And in, in the law, it was written to represent Yahweh Shai cleansing us. And even that statement right here, all things by the law, almost all things are purged. Almost all things are by the law purged. Blood is a manifold statement itself because we got the blood purging of um, things being cleansed by blood, righteous blood. Then you got the revenge blood. The land can't be cleansed except by the blood of him that shed it. So if a man that kills somebody, that land is messed up until that the nigga that did it is put to death himself. And, you know, I have plain speech. Like Paul said, you know, I have this such great hope, so I use great plainness of speech. I'm here to try to seem like the top scholar in all of this. So you're going to hear a couple niggas slip out. The Lord chose the base things of the, the world, man. But this knowledge right here is irrefutable. You know? And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Damn. Which, which is why Adam had to make that sacrifice. Hey, that was King Solomon's promise. You know, and I did, I'm saying, you know, it's a little deep for those who uh, ain't watched too many videos and gone to the knowledge, but yeah, Adam and Solomon both, all right, Adam is king solomon 
which is the Messiah, Yahweh Shai. Reincarnations in the scriptures. But that was the promise to King Solomon. That's another lesson. You know? Um, it was promised that King Solomon sinned against the Lord. The Lord would not take his mercy away. He was still going to get that everlasting throne. He is still the son of God. Cough, cough, you know, or wink, wink, whatever. You know, <laughs> come on. He's still the son of God. Yeah, cough, cough. We're going to say wink, wink, all right? But he would have to get punched with the stripes of men. That blush that had to happen to establish the everlasting. He had to make up for the sin of Adam and the sin of King Solomon. That's Romans the fifth chapter. So that blood had to be spilled to make up for Adam alone. To make it things right again. So now we can get the covenant. As sin entered into the world by one man, sin and death into the world by one man, now everlasting life is entered into the world by one man. 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 It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. So now we enter into the new, you know, so the better sacrifice had to happen. But Mashiach is not entering into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have offered, <laughs> slug it, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. So he would have to keep dying over and over, man. No, he took it the one time. He tasted death for all men now one time. For then must he have so for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Mashiach was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So we are not saved yet. Because it says it's going to appear the second time with salvation. Now the salvation is ready. We're, we're separated by the truth, you know. And sometimes it's written as past tense in the scriptures because it's, it's made ready. The deed is done. You have a shot already won and conquered death. But the actual manifestation of it, the fullness of it, has not happened yet. All right. And when I was meditating and preparing this lesson through the spirit. Uh, I had different ideas on how I wanted to touch on the manifold part, but really it came out a lot already, just through the Spirit. So I'm just going to get this wisdom of Solomon, Lord willing, end it. Because it's going to plainly say that it's manifold. Now, the Spirit hit, hit, hop on me then. We'll see. We'll grab Mo. But man, it, the Lord's so raw, it already didn't hit so many times. <laughs> I, I'm wooed. Spirit is truly like the wind, man. Hey, this was my Solomon. I ain't, you know, I'm old, man. Was my Solomon seven twenty two? For wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding spirit, holy, one only, so it's, on, it's only one truth, it's only one wisdom, right? Manifold, manifold, but it's literally, you know what, let's go ahead and.
Let's go ahead and do this. I am manifold of many kinds, numerous in kinds or variety, diverse, but it's only one truth. All right. So here's what it is right here. Exhibiting or embracing many points. So one prophecy can touch on different time periods, different points. One proverb can have multiple meanings. That's wisdom. Now, that's no private interpretation, so it's no everybody's taking how they want to take it. No, but the Lord's so wrong when he, he can say something. Hey, niggas do it all the time with rap. Some of the hardest puns, it'll, it'll have two different meanings. The literal meaning, then the, you know, most time niggas is talking about murder or some shit like that. They had that, that type of meaning to it. You'd be like, oh, shit. Then they call it a double entendre or something like that. I could be wrong. But I believe that's that's the phrase. Yeah, a double entendre is a figure of speech. Oh, I'm tripping. Let me pull it up like this. Let me see. Uh, I'll drop it over to this phone. A double entendre is a figure of speech or part, or a particular way of wording that is devised to have a double meaning. Double is from the French word. Means double meaning, and then, you know nowadays when they do it, it's you know it's like it says right here is more risque or indecent. But the point is, something can have multiple meanings. You know, where do you think that originated from, man? The Lord's the king of that. <laughs> For wisdom, which the work of all things taught me, from her is an understanding spirit, holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain. Not subject to hurt, loving a thing that is good, quick, which cannot be let it, ready to do good. Kind to man, steadfast, sure, free from care, having all power, overseeing all things, and going through all understanding. Pure and most subtle spirit. For wisdom is more moving than any emotion. She passed and going through all things by reason of her pureness. Everything is made through wisdom. The whole universe, everything we see is made through wisdom. Water is made through wisdom. The fact that water, like Esau goes, you know, the H2O, they they put the, 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 they went and researched the science to it, which science means, you know, knowledge or to know. They researched the science to it and shows the wisdom of the Lord in water. H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen. The Lord put that together through wisdom. Clearly, there is a, a just that alone proves there's a creator. And these things are done with wisdom. There's no randomness to, to, to what we see and, and feel and touch, smell. Everything is put together perfectly. Come on. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of God and the image of his goodness. And being but one, she can do all things and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. So these, these words of wisdom that's written in the, in the ancient world, these different periods of time, all right, are applicable in every generation. She maketh all things new. And in all, in Romans 15 to 4. So this wisdom wasn't written for this one time period and dies out. 
No, man, it has applications that's meant through our every generation, man. Even as Paul put it, as something simple as muzzling not the ox. Well, of course that applies to an animal, but you, when you go into the spirit of the scripture, the wisdom of that scripture, all right? Say in this modern world, you, you own a, a grocery store. You should allow your workers to, to, or you own a restaurant, you should allow your workers to get in certain shit for free. Have it discounted, whatever. That's just, that's actually law. <laughs> but it, it's the way it applies, you know, on a deeper level. And Paul used to talk about um, tithes, you know, helping out men that labors with you. You have, you have reaped our spiritual things. Should we not reap your carnal things? So that's just, that's another note, but that's a, uh, that's actually through the spirit of something. And I'm talking to myself first and foremost. You got to remember. You know, remember the men that, that, that's done labor with us. Don't leave them hanging. Of course, you know, we in a lower state, but remember the men, man. least we can do is pay our tithes. But we ain't got to just stop the love offerings, free will offerings. Only, hey, that, that's that's a, you know, this is a side note, little rant, but, you know, you got these different niggas that wake up to the Israelites and they start scoffing, tithing money. Well, in the ancient world, tithes was, 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 was animals or Corn, well, that was your substance. A tithe was whatever your sub, your increase was. Well, now our increase is paid to us in cash, man. Well, that's a side note. She maketh all things new, and in all ages entering into holy souls. She maketh them friends of the Most High and prophets. All right. So that's the manifoldness of the scriptures, man. I did have an example. I thought about touching on. Yeah, Daniel 11, 31. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pull the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination and make it desolate. Now, this is happening in the, you know, during the time of the Maccabees with Antiochus. I'm going to just cheat it. I know better than that. Filter. Book. Salakia. 
All right, yeah, First Maccabees 154. Just to get to the point, you can read through it, you know, on your own. But Antiochus made it. Everybody had to follow. Basically, he saw what to do now. One world government followed his ways. All right. Took away the sacrifice and went and put. They sacrificed swine flesh, man. But uh, in our temple, this First Maccabees 154. Now, the 15th day of the month, Cheers 11, the 140th and 5th year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and built the idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side and burned incense at the doors of their houses and in the streets. All right? So they defiled our temple, man. Esau went in there, set up shop in Jerusalem, put his ways in there, and offered filth on our holiness. Okay? Now, that's the abomination that makes desolate, right? But then we have... You know what? It mentioned again right here, Daniel 9 and 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice of the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Even until the cons cons consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. All right. That's another one I had to. Oh, yeah, it was 12. I thought so. 12, 11. And from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination to make it desolate sh set up, that should be 1,290 days. So we see this phrase, but it's, it's meant for two different times. All right. And ultimately, it was going to Esau being in Jerusalem. So, um, damn. Oh, yeah. I just glitched that. What the hell did I type? Matthew 24, 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet standing in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, and let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. All right? So the script is manifold. You know, hopefully it's edifying. All praises on the glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh, Shabbat, Bahasham, Rakakodash. Double honor to the apostle of great millstone. And Southeast Brothers doing this thing in sincerity and truth and with charity. Shalom, my Baba Ball.